Welcome to Hastings, Nebraska, birthplace of Kool-Aid. Can't have Kool-Aid without water though, so people here take their water pretty seriously. Turns out they need to, and so do millions of Americans. The town of Hastings rises up from the arid Nebraska prairie. Water here, a precious resource not to be wasted. I've been with the utilities in the city for 33 years. Marty Stange is the environmental director for this city, where about 25,000 people live. You, you run all kinds of tests. Yes, lots, lots of tests. <laughs> tests that make sure all of the city's water is safe to drink. We follow all the uh, state and federal guidelines for that testing. A few years back, they decided to check some of the areas that the city wasn't drawing water from yet, but would be in the coming years. And that's when they made a discovery. Do we just want to do enough of a scan to make sure that we haven't missed something? And then all of a sudden we started seeing uranium levels in areas that were higher. Uranium, the radioactive element most commonly associated with all things nuclear, found at levels 10 times the Environmental Protection Agency's allowable amount in the water supply the city would need. We were going to have to do something. That was a surprise to us that we needed to deal with uranium as well. More than 1,400 miles away, Dr. Annie Negra and graduate student researchers gathered around her office at Columbia University's Mailman School of Public Health in New York. They're working on the next steps in their research, building off of their recent study of uranium found in public water systems across America. Our findings suggest that, in fact, uranium is an under-recognized and under-appreciated contaminant in our public water systems. Researchers analyzed the most recent EPA data and found that about half of the public water systems in America contain uranium. This map shows those levels county by county. The darker the color, the higher the uranium level in water. Areas in bright white indicate no data available. In many parts of the U.S., uranium is naturally occurring in the ground, which is how it seeps into the water. And so what is the level of uranium contamination that the EPA says is the safe level? For uranium, the current regulatory standard is 30 micrograms per liter. But because uranium is a carcinogen, EPA says that there is no safe level of exposure to uranium. The regulatory standard allows 30 micrograms of uranium per liter because it's not just based on public health, but also on the cost and feasibility of removing it from water. In Hastings, Nebraska, their tests of untreated water showed uranium levels 10 times that amount, 300 micrograms per liter. But they're not alone. 50% of public water systems are detecting uranium. We find the highest concentrations in communities that are categorized as Hispanic Latino. And we find high concentrations also in parts of the Midwest and in the Southwest. Kevin Patterson is one of the researchers working with Dr. Negra. He's from Farmington, New Mexico, in the Four Corners region, where the water also has high concentrations of uranium. A lot of my mother's family is from the Arizona side of the reservation. Um, particularly my grandfather was a uranium mine worker. He's focusing on trying to understand the potential health effects of uranium in water. Understanding this chronic low dose exposure of uranium, particularly through drinking water, is something that is a little bit uh, less understood. Which is the next step in research that Dr. Negra and her team are working on. We're investigating um, kidney disease, which we know is associated with uranium exposure. We're investigating cardiovascular disease, which is unclear at this point. We're investigating diabetes, also unclear, and we're investigating birth outcomes, also unclear. Back in the town that brought Kool-Aid to the world, the city of Hastings looked into how much it would cost to install a system to remove uranium from water. We had originally had anticipated it would be $72 million for a population of 25,000 people. A high price. So they designed and built their own treatment system using skimming and dilution. It comes at a fraction of the original cost, about $15 million, with a state grant chipping in $4 million, with water customers here paying a 10% rate increase over seven years. It's tough. Uh, there's, it takes a lot of communication. And, you know, unfortunately, some people are going to say, well, you're hurting my pocketbook. It's 90% education, 10% doing something. And, and it's absolutely true. 
He says other communities reach out to them all the time to learn about how they designed their cost-effective system of addressing the uranium in water. And quite frankly, nobody even thought about checking it here, and now we're, we're doing that. But if we take the data, look at it, don't go screaming through the night, we can, we can try to manage these things and we can get that done. So that water remains healthy for all. Another challenge to our water supply comes from so-called forever chemicals. They're man-made, they stay in your system, and they're linked to cancer and other diseases. They've also been used in consumer products for generations. There are over 200 different use categories, ranging from dental floss to uh, clothing to carpets. It can cause like cancer, it can cause uh, uh, immunity problems, it can cause liver problems, uh, it can cause uh, kidney uh, problems. There are numerous different like problems that PFAS causes even in like, you know, like pregnant women. I would say that everyone in our country has them in their bodies. Several cities have begun filtering the chemicals in the local water supply. There are also steps you can take on an individual basis. Experts recommend installing a reverse osmosis water filter, ditching nonstick cookware, and avoiding paper or styrofoam takeout containers when you can. So one of the most uh, inexpensive ways of treating PFAS in water is using filtration systems. And many of the regular filtration systems are not capable of getting rid of PFAS, but there are like many like, you know, like tailor-made uh, filtration systems that people are coming up with, which can actually absorb PFAS and take it out of the water. More next on The Race.